Hey Adam, uh, we're in your cave for today for, it's about a time for a one day build. It is, it's been too long. I've been gone for a while, I'm back. Um, so yeah, I wanted to build something. In fact, I wanted to build two of something today. All right, what are you gonna build today? Um, we are going to attack Barbarella's rifle. This is an iconic piece of sort of Frazetta science fiction weirdness, this beautiful, ornate, amorphous rifle. And this photo, I mean, this promo photo, it's iconic, it's super iconic. A beautiful, beautiful Jane Fonda. I mean, she's incredibly sexy. And this rifle is a, just a far out piece of like right from the cover of a science fiction mm. novel. Now, I, I must confess, I've never seen this movie. And how much reference material is there for this specific rifle? Um, this is what I got. Oh, okay, that's it. <laughs> well, it's a very distinct silhouette. It is a very distinct silhouette, and I, I'm going to make some assumptions about its uh, width and thickness based on some of the things that I can see here, and I'm just going to knock a couple out. I'm knocking two out. I want one for my shot, but I've got a friend who also wants one, so I'm going to make them for them as well. All right, looking at this picture, and I'm sure you've studied this picture for a while. Yeah. You know there are different materials. There's metal, there's wood here. Mm -hmm. um, what, are you, what processes are you going through your mind? Um, one is uh, metal turning for the front here, some finishes. Specifically, I don't think I'm gonna use a hardwood for this. I'm gonna use a softwood. I'm gonna make it look like it's a hardwood mm -hmm. and then try and get a nice gloss coat on it. It's designed to look sort of like a piece of furniture, like a real high gloss finish. So that's gonna be tricky to get because that can take time and I don't want to take a lot of time. I want right. to get this knocked out. So uh, I'm going to dredge up some of my old model making tricks to kind of make this look right. All right. What's step one? Figure out how big it is. <laughs> okay. Um, and I'm going to guess that Jane Fonda is probably about 5'7", which would place this thing uh, probably three or four inches shorter than her. So I'm going to say... I'm going to say the overall length is probably 62 inches. What do you think? Yeah. Let's we see. can confirm. I'll find out. Actually, hold on a second. How tall is Jane Fonda? Looking. Oh, technology. This on the web for how tall is Jane Fonda? Five feet, six and a half inches. Wow, that pretty was good damn guess. Close. Also, the internet is creepy. Yes, the internet is totally creepy. Um, I don't want to say, hey, what's Jane Fonda doing right now? <laughs> so if that's half of her head, her head would be, yeah, about eight inches. So four inches, yes. So five foot six and a half. There's five foot six and a half. And we take four inches off of that, five foot two and a half, 62 and a half inches. Okay, so if this is 62 and a half, 62 and a half, and it's now currently nine inches. Nine. What is that factor? So 6.9, so seven. This is a one to seven. So every measurement here gets increased by seven. Let's see. Actually, I probably want to grid on top of this. So if I take a... Uh, How am I going to do this? Every six inches, so nine divided by seven equals 1.28. So 1.28 inches is six inches. This will be rough, but it'll be close enough. So on your calipers, you've marked off 1.28 inches, and yes. every 1.28 inches that you've marked off here yeah. is multiplied by a factor of seven. Yeah, I'll double check this. Yeah, I'm going to get my calculator also. <laughs> you want half foot increments? What's that? You want half foot every one of these? Should yeah, be about foot? every six inches will be reasonable for me to grid this onto a piece of wood and okay. cut it out. I don't think it's 1.2. Six divided by seven. Oh, it's every 0.85 inches. Oh, I was doing right, right, right. Nine. I was doing nine divided. Right. That's silly. What is that? 0.857 Thank inches. Thank you. 0.857. Okay. This is why you check and double check. Let's do this. And now this tape is down to all right. So 
0.85 inches. So Adam, you're yeah. marking a, you're making a grid here on yes. the printout, and you've measured it so that 0.856 inches on your on your paper. Yeah. Every 0.856 inches is going to equal to six inches, half a foot. Right. So when you mark that on your wood, you know how that's going to scale. Exactly, and this th this will allow me to transfer um, the design of this right onto a big piece of wood so I can just start cutting it out mm. and shaping it. Okay. That checks out just over five feet. Let's break out the wood I'm gonna do this on. All right, Adam, looks like you're using MDF here? This is actually, yeah, LDF. Ah, light density light fiberboard. Even even lighter. Yeah, this is true pan. This is um, if you lift it, you'll see it's really lightweight. Mm -hmm. It's actually made from sustainable pine forest. Uh, it does not have a formaldehyde binder like normal MDF does, which means it's much less toxic. Um, and it's a um, it's a really kind of one of the most important modeling materials. And you'll see what I can what I can get done with it. Um, Six, twelve, eighteen, twenty-four, thirty, thirty-six. That's So now we transfer. Drawing. Yes. So try and make reference marks to uh, where the edges intersect your grid lines. Mm -hmm. That's easy to approximate. And then you draw your curves based mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. Feeling pretty good. Right, that looks like this looks like this is a single piece with this sticking out of the top. Mm -hmm. So I think that'll be a separate piece. Now you're doing this by freehand. Some people, I imagine, could also just print out a large scale and then cut out pieces and trace. Yeah, and when I worked at ILM, we did it in every different way. Uh, sometimes we would put these on slides and project them. Sometimes we'd put them in an opaque projector and project them. Sometimes we'd put them on a computer on a digital projector and trace them. Uh, other times, full printouts. Transferring things from small to large is a multitude of ways. This is sort of the lowest tech, but actually, I, and I'm doing six inch grids because I feel pretty comfortable with how amorphous this shape is. Um, if I wanted total accuracy, I'd probably go to a two-inch grid, something even finer. Yeah. What are the things you're looking for? So it's like, it's looking at it both from a micro scale and a macro scale. So I look at it like a close-up, and okay, that's about this far, that much percentage of a grid square, etc. And then I step back and I think, okay, am I, am I hitting my general marks? Is the fluidity right, actually, you know? Because there's a gesture to the prop, too. And it's, if, uh, if it's a choice between what looks like an absolutely correct measurement or something that feels more like the original, I'll go for the thing that feels more like the original. 
like looking here, you can tell this part's really wide, and, mm -hmm. the, and then you want to make sure that rep yeah. is represented. Exactly. And this is going to get rounded and messed with. What do you about think? the bottom? I think that this there's more goes down lower. This you think this this horn is a little this wider. This horn is a little wider. Maybe more like this. Yep. And I think that the thickness here should be a little wider as well. Oh, or down here. Right. I don't know if you agree there. See. Yeah, I see what you mean. All right. So now the question is how thick is it? I've got this and I'm gonna cut it out. And this oh. is just three quarter inch. Yeah, so this is inch and a half, and I think that that's actually not as thick as it should be. Mm. I think it should be a little bit thicker. So I think I'm going to bring in a third sheet, screw them together, cut them in half, and cut out all at once. Okay. So you have enough of your atom for two guns, right? I do. You have, it's gonna, and you're cutting up to two and a quarter. I'm gonna try. You're gonna try? You're, yeah. Are you gonna do all six at once to the I, bandsaw? I, I'm gonna give it a shot. Ooh. Am I doing that? Is that just a little silly? Let me try. I'll do two. I'll do one at a time. All right. Let's see here. the jigsaw. Adam, you gave it a try with the bandsaw, but now you're going handheld. Yeah, I just, I don't have the fine control with the bandsaw okay. that I want to get these curves right. So I'm gonna go with a uh, jigsaw blade. Sometimes I like to imagine while I'm making these cuts, I'm thinking about the craftspeople who made these same cuts like 50 years ago, right? They only made one.
All right, Adam, you've cut out three pieces of MDF. Now you yeah. screwed them together uh, when you were gonna do, when you did your cutting, and yeah. at some point that gets away from you, right? Uh, yeah, it does. I, and I'm being quite loose with this because there's going to be so much shaping involved. Um, sometimes I would glue the wood together beforehand, but that can be kind of its own pain in the butt. Mm -hmm. um, if I had overnight, I would have clamped. I would have put down wood glue, clamped all three, let them sit overnight, then I'd have one big chunk. Right. As it is, um, I've got these three pieces. The jigsaw blade wandered a little bit, so not all my cuts are perfectly square, but again, that's something that's I'll fine. be able to hide later. So now I'm gonna use a little cyanoacrylate glue to glue these three pieces together around their perimeter. Um, some and then I'll- Super glue yeah. and some some spray to make it cure real fast. Yeah, this is, uh, yeah. So this is just your basic super glue. I buy it in bulk from the model store. And I'm just going around the perimeter. Again, I, I will also be smoothing out the uh, this wood, so I'm not that concerned about glue over spillage. And this is an accelerator, which actually helps to kick the glue and make it set up in just a few seconds. So I've got to get this right. There we go, that's close enough. Okay. No clamping required. No clamping required. So then there's This stuff, this, this zip kicker, Instaset is the stuff I buy. Um, it's, actually, uh, it's actually a pretty noxious solvent. Like a lot of people don't like the smell. I kind of like the smell even though I shouldn't. <laughs> um, so if, you, uh, if you're stuck and you want to kick super glue really fast, you can also use baking soda. Oh. Yeah, that's, um, that's a classic Sprinkle technique. it on and slap it together. Exactly, exactly. Okay, so these guys are Reset. So now it's time to do some finishing work on this. Let's see. I think the first thing is, I know that that's going to be rounded there. Yeah, let's just start there. Have we talked about this tool yet? Well, we've showed it off in the cave tour, Okay. Um, but we've never actually seen you use it a lot uh, for a project. So this is actually uh, on the recommendation of Tom Sachs that I own one of these. It's, a, it's effectively a knife maker's belt sander. Um, so it has all these different radii from uh, eight inch radii, three inch, two inch, inch and a half, one inch. Um, it also can change its orientation depending on what I need, which is really, really, really helpful from a moving stock. I've got a heavy duty, I think 60 grit wow. uh, sanding belt on there. And when I turn it on, you'll see, I'll be able to start actually shaping this really, really fast. Oh, and it's gonna get dusty in a hurry. <laughs> so here we go. Adam, that was amazing, the fact that you turned that hard edge into this really beautiful curve here. Well, it's and this is just the first pass, so now as I'm doing this, I haven't solved all the problems in this yet, right? I'm gonna solve some of them as I go, and one of them is how fat are the different parts of this rifle? Mm. So I'm gonna guess that it's actually pretty uniform out to here, right? Like, so that feels like a, 
a reasonable grip. shotgun yep. grip. But when it comes to into here, I think that there may be some other shapes going on and I want to get those right. So uh, basically as I'm shaping, I'm thinking. I'm sort of letting the piece kind of talk to me and figure out exactly how I want it to go. I think that this may actually, yeah, this may come in here like this. And you'll need space to put the, the, uh, the metal rod in there. Yes, exactly. Some of this is going to be open to a creative interpretation. Oh, absolutely. So much of it is open to a creative interpretation. That's, that's feeling pretty good. Okay, so on here, I'm going to say that it probably comes in here. It's probably pretty uniform. That. I like how well it looks as just something you can grip. And right. It, it's functional. It is mostly functional. It's a little bit ludicrous in terms of how far up this comes. Now, I'm still not sure about this part, but as I shape each piece, you know, when you're shaping something like this, you're looking at it from every profile as you're shaping it. And you're saying, okay, I gotta take a little bit down there. That's a little clunky. That's a little clunky. And I'm going with the most like rough sandpaper right now so I can take off a lot of stock and in a little bit I'll go to finer and finer and finer grades. Now I also know that this is actually really fine out mm -hmm. here so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring this out and I think I think this is a little thicker than that. The other yeah power rest. I think I think I'm not sure about that one just yet so I think this one is more like this how are you deciding where you're drawing your marks for, for cutting? Well, so what I'm doing is I'm giving myself these guidelines in pencil of how far in I want to cut mm -hmm. this. And I have a two-dimensional drawing. And I want to end up with a three-dimensional gun, and it's going to have its own logic to it. I could make assumptions based on shading here, but really, once I have this thing in front of me, it's going to make sense or it isn't. So I'm just grabbing and marking the parts that I can see, like this upper spine here. I know that that's long and thin, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna mark these lines. I'm not gonna come in farther than that with my sanding. And then once I take a look at that, that'll inform the other parts that I'm gonna start adjusting. I think that this curve right here may actually be not bilaterally symmetrical. I think it may be asymmetrical. And I may come in here and do an arc like this. On the inside? Yeah, mm. to, uh, to come around to this, but we'll see. Uh, Oh, actually, given that, yeah, see that? I've come to a swoop, and then I come down here, and I bring to that. So instead of using your middle piece of yeah. LDF, you're using actually the, you're curving it toward you. Yeah, that makes more sense to me in terms of the logic of the gun. It uh, would come out like this, and then come in, and slowly, And then, yeah, let's see. Hey, if I totally screw it up, I can just do this again. <laughs> okay. St 
still. Alright. I'm gonna ignore this little horn for right now. And I'm gonna come in and take out some of that with a bandsaw. coming along, it's coming along, and I definitely feel like I want to come in here, but I'm, I'm not sure about, about this horn here. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna err on the side of caution. I'm gonna leave a- Not take too much out of it. Yeah, I'm gonna leave a part here and then come in. Because I like this. I like this yeah. not being symmetrical. It's kinda, that's kinda nice, and that feels kinda right. All right. So again, as I add each curve, it informs the next set of curves and how this wants to go. Is there a specific technique you're doing to take away pieces of it on that grinder? Just heavy, heavy grit sandpaper so I can move a lot. It, it's, it's risky, right? Because I could actually take off way too much very mm -hmm. quickly with that. But I'm going sort of slow and sort of working up to it. Eventually, I'll put a finer belt on that to do some finer uh, uh, touch-ups, and then I'll go to handheld sandpaper, and then I'll try and seal it. Coming along. Adam, you look a little dusty. I am a little bit dusty. Um, this thing is coming along. It's actually much easier to hold now than it oh, was yeah, before. Oh yeah, it's curved in there. This is curved in there. I like this, this, this bulb here, this, this bulge. Yeah, and you know, I do too. It's funny, the one thing I know from looking at this is that there are no flat planes. So mm. I am gonna have to go in and like wherever there is a flat plane, Send transition out. that out. But now the real question is, how thicker are these? And I think, now looking at this, that this is probably about as thick as, as this it's is. thin, yeah. Right, but it bulges here, right? So it, it grades, it, it gradually gets that, that thin. And then the question is, what does that look like? And that might be even more of a kind of a lobe, you know? It's really hard to say. I'm gonna bring it down to the same thickness as that and see how I like that. Okay, there we go. <laughs> a little sight there. Okay, now I'm getting kind of to a place I'm really sort of liking it. This sort of feels like an organic, weird sort of organ-like orb. Um, I'm gonna start roughing in with some hand mm. sandpaper, see if I can't bring this thing more into, more into line. One of the things that's great about this light density fiberboard is, yeah, you can move tons of stock really, really quickly with it. There's just nothing quite like it. Um, this is still a little bit rough, so I'm gonna head in with a, a finer belt here. Here's the other reason that this sander is great. Placing the belts is pretty trivial. And... Bam. Uh, Done. 60 to a 
100? I think this is more like 120. So now it's time to start taking some sandpaper to this. <coughs> and finish it. that. I'm gonna wrap it around. Delrin rod. To kind of give myself. Now it's just a matter of going in and holding this up to the light repeatedly and kind of just seeing where it needs to be smoothed and where you can get rid of facets. And that's just uh, And this is gonna be the final shape because your finishing isn't gonna allow you to fix the shape anymore. That's correct. So it, based after I do this, I take another look and see if there's any really th really bad things that stand out. And then I'll go in and try and fix those. So, so I'm uh, making real progress now. A lot of it's hand sanding. Most of it's hand sanding. Most of it's hand but sanding now. it looks real now. smooth. It's quite smooth. I want to start making sure I don't end up with, see this little thumb divot there? Mm -hmm. That's a problem. I'm just going to go through and start. I'm very close to we'll being able to start to coat this. show people how, when you designed it, like, it's more bulbous here. This is the inside. And it comes around, yes, and it actually curves here. So it's not bilaterally symmetrical along right. this line, and I like that. So now we're just, yeah, we're getting ready to put the finishing details on this, and then I'm going to coat it. And while I'm coating it, I'll make the hardware for it. Oh, perfect. So once I coat it, I'll let it dry, and then uh, we'll make some hardware. Let's see here. <laughs> So I'll tell you one thing that's really important about this kind of work is knowing when to give up your sandpaper. Right. When I was teaching at the Academy of Art, I saw repeatedly students using something like this just for hours. And it's like sandpaper might cost money, but it's a lot less than your time. And go and find fresh pieces all the time. Um, it just goes so much faster. I, I never thought that I'd have to uh, teach so much about sanding specifically, but if I ever finish my model making manual, it'll be a whole chapter just on sanding. Judicious use, and you're using different parts of the... Now it's kind of worn down, it actually helps me, it kind of moves to a finer grit. I'm really almost there now. Let's see here. All right. I'm really, I'm pretty happy with that. I think that's come out pretty nicely. Yep, you can actually grab it. It's ridiculous, but. There's still that sight on the top. Yeah, the loop. there's that I have to do. And then the hardware for the uh -huh. trigger and then the big barrel. Yeah. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give this a hefty coat of some, uh, a hefty coat of some lacquer primer which has a high particulate content and that actually will act as a kind of a sealer to uh, seal the pores of the fiberboard 
and allow me to clear coat it and get a gloss finish. Because right now, this stuff acts like a sponge on paint. Mm. And if you were to give it a coat of glossy paint, it would just come out super uneven. You have to seal it before you, uh, before you get that paint. Nice. Um, wow. So there's this, right. So I need a three quarter inch router bit. Let's see. Okay, here we go. Uh, So for this little eye that's on mm -hmm. top, I've cut out a rough shape that'll slot right into this slot I machined with a three quarter inch end mill. Now I'm going to uh, sand this so it's a little bit it's flush, yep. nice, and then I'm going to glue. It, uh, then I'm going to cut out the middle eye, and then I'm going to glue it. Then I'm going to glue it in. And what do you use to sanding. cut out the middle eye? Um, it's a good question. Probably the jigsaw, but right. we'll see. A lot of sanding from the inside out. Yeah, but I'm, I I think actually I may make it. Um, I may not make it a perfectly rounded, I may make that hole have sharper edges, because I think that could look kind of cool. Getting close. Adam, what are you making here? Um, I'm making a stand so I can paint this with uh, primer ah. and let it dry. That's the basic gist of it.
Lovely. Ooh. All right, Adam, so for this yeah. top piece uh, that you milled the slot for, yeah. how did you make this? Well, uh, this I, I sort of freehanded it and actually fit it into the slot that I machined out of the uh, main body of the gun with a three quarter inch uh, milling bit, end mill. Um, and so now I'm making them as separate parts because it's just easier. I can paint and prime this and make it nice and smooth and fit it into that. I don't have to worry about corners or anything. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing stuff like that, the component, componenting, that's a terrible word. Um, is often very useful for uh, finishing. Plus in your reference image, it actually looks like they're, they might be separate pieces, or at least they're two different textures. They do, like it could be, I don't know, a caulking mechanism, yeah. who knows? Who knows? All right, and that was just with your jigsaw again and then exactly. a lot of sanding. Yeah, yeah, I love this little cordless jigsaw. It's a great little machine. Everything just looks smaller in person. I know. So Adam, right now you're sketching out the hardware. Yes. Um, this is that trigger guard and the trigger yep. and the little lip in the front here. Yeah. And that's tracing around the curve of the, this grip that you're reading. Exactly. Built. Exactly. Adam, yeah. what's your process going to be for creating this project? Well, I've just used sandpaper to take off the anodized coating on this hardware store aluminum. Um, I'm going to bend it into the shape of the trigger guard, and then I'm going to polish it to a high polish, because I think that that's what okay. the hardware should look like. Then I'll drill a, two, a second mounting hole for putting this in, and then I'll drill this little trigger guard front piece. It's all bent by hand? It's so all be bent by hand, yeah. This um, aluminum is pretty good flex. Yeah, this is soft aluminum. You can buy this at every hardware store. Um, and it's sort of a bread and butter material here. Trigger guard. Real shiny. Yeah, man. And it, you've bent it just by hand. Yeah. Wow. It's not perfect, but it's absolutely what the mm -hmm. doctor ordered there. Yep. I think it'll look really nice. I need two more pieces, the actual trigger yep. and this little loop here. So I'm gonna do that part next. Same process. Yep. Have your calculator. Uh, do some quick math for me. 0.13 times seven. 0.91. Great. Cool. Three quarter will do. <laughs> uh, let's do uh, 0.2 times seven. That's 1.4. Mm -hmm. So let's see. 1.4. Uh, 0.29 times seven. Uh, actually, 0.27 times seven. 1.89. Uh, 0.8 times 7? 5.56 or 5.6. Um, 0.44. 3.08. Oh, I'll use the... I'll use the Delrin. 
from the top. Yep. Dirt, dirt. Okay. It's not that long at all. No. No, the whole gun is smaller than you think. All right, what are you doing on the lathe here? Well, right now, I'm going to be making the front barrel, which I hopefully won't be making too heavy, because I'm machining it out of Delrin. It's an easy material to machine, but I've got a solid rod here, so I'm gonna have to hollow it out. It should take me about 25 minutes to machine this, I think. There we are, it's crude. That's the business end of our Barbarella rifle. All right, Adam, after all, adding a lot of primer and sanding, that's an important thing. A lot of primer. So let me just make it clear, like we took this MDF and I made it really nice and smooth. And this was a process of hitting it with a ton of primer, letting it sit overnight, coming in the next day, giving it a bit of a sand, but more primer. So I've effectively filled the porosity of the sanded MDF mm -hmm. with effect, the, the dried paint that is the primer and allows me to get this finish. It's, a, it's like a shell that turns a three separate pieces into yeah. what looks like one piece. Effectively, yeah, there's, you can see some artifacts of the three separate pieces, but I'm pretty happy with this. Now what I wanna do is I wanna add a, uh, a fake wood grain to it. Mm. Uh, and I'm not exactly positive how I'm gonna do that, but we're gonna kind of make it up as we go along okay. um so first, and then the barrel here that's that delrin. right so this is this is yes this is the right delrin or acetyl barrel front that matches what we see and i've got the polished aluminum uh trigger and trigger guard mm -hmm. uh plus this weird little sight the thingy sight thing. which sands in quite you know it glues in quite nicely so uh as soon as i get some texture or some wood grain on this it should be actually ready to assemble. Oh, right, now I have to put some silver tape on the front of the barrel to make it look all chromey. Awesome. I'm going to make a little stand for this so I can stand it upright and paint it. Okay. Let's do that. Great. Now I don't want to split the wood, so I'm just going to gently half sync those two and now that stands upright okay cool so start out like this hey will you um shake this one yep. up for me that's not bad just like that i mean i can't see any wood grain in the photos Hell, I might just consider this a reasonable enough paint job. What was your original idea with two colors? Well, I wasn't sure. Sometimes you can brush coat a wood grain. Sometimes you can use a uh, what's called a comb 
to kind of fake your wood grain. speckling of the khaki. Yeah, so I'm giving it a kind of a fake wood grain texture. I'm figuring, I'm trying to think like the art department of a 60s sexy sci-fi movie. And I'm thinking, you know, you know, bringing in a lighter texture allows me to kind of make this brown look a little browner. Now the blow dryer is ideal for drying out the paint, but you gotta let the solvents in the paint flash off. If you get the blow dryer too close, you can actually overheat it and burn it. I forgot the site. Whoa! Uh. Ha! Ha! Ah. <laughs> Always the danger. That's me being super impatient. Ah, uh, you were kind of asking for it. I was, I was, it's true. All right, I'm gonna have to add that afterwards. So Adam, to get the chrome look on the barrel, this is the te technique we've shown before. Yes, and this is the, uh, this is poor man's chrome otherwise known as aluminized plumbing tape, mm -hmm. not to be mistaken for plumber's tape. Um, and I'm gonna try and get a chromey finish on the front of this thing. Um, it's gonna be mostly successful. I wonder if it could take a polish actually. Actually, you know what? I have some really good chrome paint. Okay. I'm gonna try chrome paint instead. The problem is my tape isn't going to cover the long cone of this barrel really well. Uh, it's going to, uh, it's going to end up looking sort of chock-a-block because I'm going to have to cover it in a bunch of pieces. So I've got some primer and some nice chrome paint. I'm going to try that instead. This acetal should take the paint quite nicely. It's not like Teflon where it's going to let it go. All right, so let's take this off. All right, so one of the tricks to a nice chrome is, uh, a good glossy undercoat. Okay. So I'm going to go here with a uh, a gloss black, which should give us a really should give us a good finish. So paint. Now I've got a really, really good high quality Krylon. Everyone has, chrome is a tough one from a model making standpoint, but uh, I really like how bright and shiny this is. It should not look too dissimilar from that aluminum. There we go. Let's get the inside first. All right, here we go. The real trick with spray paint is never over painting. You get a drip and you just, it's like you're gonna spend your whole day stripping it back down. So light powder coats like that. I'm not going too heavy. I'm stopping after each run, covering over each application a little bit. And you can see that it's getting shinier. Yeah. See that? Oh yeah. As I'm building up the paint, it's actually getting nice and shiny. Can you do anything to make it even shinier? No, unfortunately with paint, this is about as good as you're gonna get. I know there are some paint systems out there that have been covered on Jay's Garage and there's a system called All Clad, which is very touchy, but for your average punter, which I am when it comes to this kind of thing, this is about as good as you're going to get, although that's pretty darn that's good. That's pretty good. On film, that looks like metal. <laughs> so, let's let these two parts dry, and then uh, 
Come back and finish it and put it all together. We'll come back and finish it, which is gonna take us like an hour while we wait, but for you it's only gonna be like 30 seconds. Watching paint dry. <laughs> yes. Fun for us and went by instantaneously for you guys. So what next? Well, now uh, the paint is where I kind of like it. It's a nice shiny shape. Um, it's time to assemble all the bits and bobs. <gasps> yeah, and I have a thing about assembly in that I dislike using glue if I don't have to. And the reason is, is I like taking things back apart uh, and putting them back together. So mm. uh, we've got that, we've okay. got that, we've got that. Guard, right? right. Lip and then right there. Uh, this guy goes right there. Um, and, all oh, right, okay, I'll have to shave that just a little bit. And I actually have some ways in which I'm gonna bolt this together. I'm going to, in fact, install some threaded inserts into the wood so that the screws go in really ni nicely. It's mm -hmm. basically, I'm adding metallic threads into the wooden shape so that this thing is uh, dismantleable. Got it. Uh, so once I get, yeah, basically, once I get it. these two and this mm -hmm. and put the nozzle on, we're done. Simple. Hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so. Let's see. You, yes. All right, I'm gonna use uh, two kinds of threaded inserts. These are brass threaded inserts, um, and they're basically, that's an internal threading of 832 with this external heavy duty threading. So I match the diameter of the barrel here, drill a hole, and then I uh, use a little tool to install this in there. Do you have to choose a threading based on the material you're gonna put that into? Uh, it, it all depends. It's, it's basically preference based. Um, I like using these, note that um, these are two different approaches to the 832 thread. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with the larger one since it's hardier and it should last longer. Great. Um, and I actually built my own installation tool for this. It's the screwdriver with a post on it. So it goes in there to line it up and then allows me to install it. Awesome. So I need to figure out that barrel size. Now, let's see. First of all, will you hold that up for me like that? This comes. Excellent. Okay. And that goes the other way. Oh, right. Yeah. It's so short. Yep. It's a right angle drill and allows you to get into tight places. Now I want to be careful. Oh shoot! You went all the way through. Yeah, I did go a little bit through. <laughs> I was just saying I wanted to be careful. Now we put in the threaded insert. I'll see it socks in quite nicely. Okay. That really is a useful little tool. Oh yeah, they really they make it. Um, they make a really excellent mechanical connection. Uh, right, Alan. So this will be tricky. Because you're gonna try to go through both that yes. lip and the front. So if you'd stand it on that end. And then. Go ahead. Very nice. There we go. That's nice. And Down, that's good. Ooh, that's looking pretty nice. That's pretty good. Yeah, that's absolutely feeling like it should. All right, so time to put this guy in. If you hold that up like that. That's the ugly end, so I'll do that down. Shave <clears> a little <throat> bit off. Yeah. Watch your fingers there. Mm. 
still need to close that gap. Oh, there we go. Ah, there we go. All right. Yeah, excellent. Now, oh, okay, I need to open that a little bit more. So now I want to clamp. And this is going to be clamped together? Well, no, I'm actually going to, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to use a different type of threaded insert for this one. Um, one at the, so. Now I'm going to use a threaded insert that looks like this. And this will actually embed right into this Little material. More. You're going to go in from the bottom. Mm -hmm. oh. So I'm going to end up doing that. And then the top right. of the rod will be um, totally mm -hmm. visible. So put this there if you'd support that. And I come. Hmm. You know what? Actually, to make sure I nail this, let's do it this way. Take that. Spin that around. Make sure I'll cover them that second one. Yep, hole. I did. Okay, excellent. So now the tube is marked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, one gently, two. very gently. Here's how this goes. This threaded insert looks like this. And the way you actually install it is with an install tool that effectively crimps this together and embeds it in a piece of uh, mm. aluminum plate. So the- Because the, there's no threading on that. And there's threading on the inside of this. Right, and when I, when, when I put the, when I do the install on this, you'll see, it crushes the insert, leaving the threading able to be threaded, huh. but embeds it in a plate. It's a really, really nifty sort of manufacturer's kind of uh, deal. For uh, metal and for... Yes. Ah, and here is the install. Okay, so... Thank you. <laughs> Here comes the install tool. There'll be a point at which it resists me, I think. That's it. Okay, now I can't move it anymore. Oh, uh, I've squished uh -huh. that in here between. Isn't that oh. nice? A little low profile bit of threading in something that you'd never get threading in otherwise? You can see the, the difference between this one and that one right there. And that's pressed in against the, the edge of the, the aluminum. Be able to just line right up. You're actually line up first. Ah, hold on. I'm getting I'll resistance. Make, I'll make this go faster. <laughs> there we go. Excellent. Okay. Um, we are almost there.
Grab the back. Oh! Yeah, sorry. A little one more thing. A little last, the last little bit. Oh, hold that up. I'm going to mm -hmm. put some glue on there. There it is. Wait, wait, wait. I've got to align it. That's it. Okay, good. It's done. <laughs> there you go. Whew. The Barbarella rifle, complete Barbarella with the sight. Rifle. You have your hardware there. You can easily disassemble everything. Yep. Almost everything. Great yep. use of your LDF. Combining three sheets. This was a tough build. This was a, this this used a lot of uh, a lot of different techniques. Yeah. Um, it, it was relatively simple structurally, but complicated just from an execution standpoint. And I'm, from I'm, a design standpoint, with only one image as reference. I, I I love those kind of challenges. I'm really happy with this. It's great. It looks like the wood a... there. You have the Delwin in front. The Nice chrome finish on the, the, the paint application. Yeah, yeah. I might not ever be as sexy as Jane Fonda is in 1968 or even now, <laughs> but at least I've got this. Awesome. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for sharing this one day build. And thank you guys for watching. Subscribe to Tested on YouTube and check us out on Tested.com. Thanks, guys. We'll see you next time.